Hi guys, so I've covered former member of the Brexit party Ben Habib before, but the absolute rubbish he talks needs to be challenged, I believe. Here he is on GB News talking about how he didn't get the Brexit he wanted, that Remainers are still stopping Brexit from happening within the Conservative Party, and I think, if you can believe it, that he's suggesting that Lord Frost, the Brexit minister, wasn't really a Brexiteer. <laughs> OK, let's hear what he has to say. Is this the Brexit that you voted for and you helped to make happen? Well, it's a really interesting preamble that you just gave me because you described Brexit as if it was a binary event, mm. that one minute we were in and the next minute we were out. And actually, Brexit isn't a binary event and Brexit hasn't yet been done, not by my definition. Mm. Wow, OK, well then what the heck is your definition? I would love to know what your definition is because the sad part about all of this is that Ben Habib voted for the withdrawal agreement. Now, remember the withdrawal agreement, Boris Johnson's oven-ready deal, get Brexit done, OK? What happened was the negotiations took place between the UK government and the European Union for the withdrawal agreement, OK, to leave the European Union. Um, it was pushed through the House of Commons. It was voted for in the European Parliament. And Ben Habib, who used to be a member of the European Parliament, voted for it. So if he truly believed that Brexit wasn't going to be delivered, or this wasn't a real Brexit, then why did he vote for the withdrawal agreement? And why the heck don't these quote-unquote journalists ask him that question? Ben, why did you vote for the withdrawal agreement if you didn't think it was a real Brexit? And when we talk about the economic benefits of Brexit, and just moving perhaps uh, on to Lord Frost's resignation. Ah, damn, I was hoping he would describe some of the economic benefits of Brexit. And he said, talking about the economic benefits, now let's talk about uh, Lord Frost and something else. Nation, because one of the things he cited was that the government hadn't really um, delivered the kind of economic um, policy program that he wanted, which was a smaller state, lower regulations, lower taxation. Lower regulations. I've been constantly hearing from Brexiteers that environmental standards would rise post-Brexit. Food standards would go up post-Brexit. Animal welfare standards would go up as well. But if standards rise, that requires more regulation. But how can you have more higher standards with lower regulation? That doesn't make any sense. But which is it? Is it higher food standards or lower regulation? And the principal reason this government has been unable to deliver that kind of traditional Tory party policy agenda is because Lord Frost himself tied us into a trade and cooperation agreement requiring us to align ourselves with EU state aid laws, competition laws, environmental laws, employment laws. You know, net zero, for example, used to be just something that Theresa May had put on the Net zero has nothing to do with the TCA. Why is Ben Habib injecting something that's completely unrelated to Brexit into this Brexit discussion? Net zero has zero, <laughs> net zero is zero connected to Brexit. Why is he mentioning it? Statute books, it is now something to which we are committed by international treaty. <laughs> These are, these are international treaties. So when the UK assigns an international treaty, do, has it given away its sovereignty? Is the UK no longer sovereign because it's part of the United Nations or NATO or any other organisation where it signs up to and it, it agrees to take on rules and regulations? The WTO, you know, something that Brexiteers are huge fans of. Do they not understand there are rules and regulations within the WTO? These people don't make any sense. So the ability for the UK to deregulate, to have a small state, to cut taxes, is materially hampered by the very deal that Lord Frost and Boris Johnson claimed delivered Brexit. So the withdrawal agreement was not Brexit. Brexit only happened with, with the TCA. OK, this is, this is very difficult for me to understand. 
let me try and make it as clear as possible. Ben Habib voted for the withdrawal agreement. Okay. Ben Habib also told Boris Johnson to walk away from the European Union um, without a deal, without a TCA. So if Boris Johnson had walked away without a TCA, that would have been Brexit. But I thought Brexit was the oven-ready deal. I thought Brexit was the withdrawal agreement. This doesn't make any sense. Can someone in the comment section please explain this to me? Because I'm a bit thick. I thought, according to what Ben Habib ha used to be saying, was that the withdrawal agreement was Brexit. Because that's what he voted for. Obviously, he wouldn't have voted for it if it wasn't Brexit. Now he's saying, no, no, Brexit was the TCA. But he would... But last year, he was telling Boris Johnson not to sign a TCA, to walk away without a TCA. So then how would, have Boris, how would Boris Johnson have delivered a Brexit? I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> so my response is that we haven't actually got Brexit yet mm. because we're still stuck in this lunar orbit around the EU, stuck having to adhere to many of its regulations like in the TC, like in the withdrawal agreement that you voted for. Um, I mean, I could go on ad, ad nauseum if you like. And <laughs> I, viewers will probably... No, 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 please, please give us some examples. <laughs> I would love to hear some examples. Then I could understand what the heck you're talking about. We were rolling their eyes in seconds, but we really haven't properly Brexited yet. Yeah. And I think for those of us who want uh, an independent, nimble, competitive United Kingdom, like, which is no longer a member of the United Nations or part of NATO. Is that what he means? This, like a hermit nation, like North Korea or something? What is he talking about? What is, what is his definition of Brexit? But because, you know, in 2019, Ben Habib would have said, well, my version of Brexit is the withdrawal agreement because that's what I voted for. But now we seem to get a different type of Brexit. So is... Has Ben Habib changed his mind somewhat? You know the way you know politicians and people can change their mind. People can say, well, it, I thought Brexit was a good idea. Now I think it's a bad idea. Can we have another referendum? Well, Ben Habib would say, no, you can't change your mind, even though it seems Ben Habib has changed his mind. It's a huge mistake to talk about Brexit in binary terms because we have to continue this fight to make sure that we have the ability... Who is we? <laughs> and continue what fight? I thought Brexit happened. And fight who? <laughs> who are you fight? So who has to fight? What are they fighting for? And who are they fighting against? The eventually genuinely to deregulate, to set our own laws and to chart an independent trade policy for the United Kingdom. Mm, I I, you mentioned um, Lord Frost there. I just want to get your opinion on uh, the resignation of Lord Frost. And actually, some might say that this is bad for Brexit. But what are your thoughts on this? Well, Lord Frost is another cog in the Tory party um, uh, sort of Brexit delivery team, if you like. And I never really saw Lord, F Lord Frost. And I think it's a mistake to fate individuals in the way that Lord Frost was fated by Brexiteers. <laughs> Well, to a certain extent, he's right here that many... I don't know if he's... He, I think he perhaps is trying to distance himself. I, I'm not familiar with him complaining about Lord Frost in the past because Brexiteers were happy with Lord Frost. You know, they had Theresa May as Prime Minister. They were not happy with Theresa May. They got rid of Theresa May. The ERG got rid of Theresa May. They put in a Brexiteer, Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson put in, in place... Um, a Brexiteer to deal with Brexit, to be the negotiator. Like, at, what, at what stage were you not happy? Like, when did you start to say, look, I'm not happy? I, I would love to hear from Brexiteers back in 2019 who were saying, look, Lord Frost is not the person to do this job. Because all of the Brexiteers, including the ERG, were saying, yes, Lord Frost is the guy to do the job. Now they're saying he's not or he wasn't. Isn't that convenient? His rhetoric was superb, but ultimately he was a cog in the Tory wheel. And the Tory... His rhetoric was superb. What the heck does that mean? Do you judge somebody? You judge somebody's work on how they speak? 
or do you judge somebody's work on what they deliver? Free wheel is a very, very confused one. It, 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 it's got loads of Remainers still in the party and it's got a Brexit. I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but we got loads of Remainers in the party. Which of these Remainers have, yes, there are some Remainers or people who would like to rejoin, I think, rejoin the European Union still within the Conservative Party. But how many of these people have their hands on the levers of power? How many of them are government ministers? Because Liz Truss used to be a Remainer. Now she's a Brexiteer. And my definition of a Brexiteer is somebody who still thinks Brexit is a good idea. You know, somebody could have voted to remain and they changed their mind and now they're a Brexiteer because they think it was a good idea to, to leave. Uh, and the opposite is, can take place. People who thought it was a good idea to remain in the European Union and now they've jumped on board the Brexit bus. I would call them Brexiteers. Sort of hardcore faction, if you like. And Lord Frost was torn between these two. No one really knows whether Lord... Torn between these two? I'm sorry, once again, to keep interrupting. Lord Frost was torn between who? Who was on the other side pulling Lord Frost in their direction? Can you name some names? I would love to know them because I don't know who, who he's talking about here. Who was pulling Lord Frost back to the centre? Who was pull, pulling Lord Frost towards remaining in the European Union? Who? Lord Frost was a Remainer or a Brexiteer, by the way. No one knows how he voted in 2016. And I remember when he was... Rep now he's trying to suggest that Lord Frost wasn't a real Brexiteer. Only a true Brexiteer is somebody who, what, hasn't changed their mind? <laughs> like, unlike Ben. <laughs> um, for me, a Brexiteer is somebody who still thinks Brexit is a good idea. Now, generally, there are people who voted for Brexit and continue to think that. But I wouldn't call somebody a Brexiteer who voted and then changed their mind and said, look, I actually realise it's a disaster. I would call somebody a Brexiteer like Liz Truss, who voted to remain and now decided, well, to further my career, I'm going to become a Brexiteer. I'm going to say, yes, Brexit is a good idea, even though all of the evidence is against that. Yes, I would call her a Brexiteer. Well, is Lord Frost or was Lord Frost a Brexiteer? I don't know. Pr I presume he was a Brexiteer because he believed Brexit was a good idea. After 2016, he seemed to continually say that Brexit is a good idea. So I would presume he was a good, uh, he believed Brexit was a good idea. Can someone not change their mind, Ben? Presenting the Scottish distilleries that he was talking about the virtues of the single market. So, you know, it, I, I think it's very dangerous to think of Lord Frost in, you know, in terms of sort of idyllic, the embodiment of what Brexiteers want. Um, Lord Frost resigned, I think, mainly because he knew the Northern Ireland Protocol, which he was trying to renegotiate, has been trying to renegotiate, uh, would be a disaster in the end. That, he, that, that the UK would... But the Northern Ireland Protocol has not been a disaster. The Northern Ireland Protocol is actually protecting Northern Ireland from the consequences of Brexit. It has been doing that since its implementation. How would it be a disaster? Yes, I know Brexiteers described it as a disaster, but then Brexiteers don't operate within reality. The reality of the protocol is that it's working. It's protecting Northern Ireland from Brexit. It's allowing Northern Ireland businesses to continue to operate. Northern Ireland hasn't suffered the same way as the rest of the UK has. I would call that a success. Obviously, Ben Habib calls that failure. He would like Northern Ireland to suffer the same consequences as the rest of the UK. Empty supermarket shelves, uh, lack of heavy goods vehicle drivers, etc. Was not going to do what was right by Northern Ireland that we don't have the courage to invoke Article 16, which is the article in the protocol giving us the ability to spend part, suspend parts of it uh, to protect Northern Ireland. I think he knew we were going to capitulate on the protocol. That we. What do you mean he knew we were going to capitulate on the protocol? Um, he had been saying for months, we're going to trigger Article 16. We're going to trigger Article 16. We're going to trigger Article 16. 
Boris Johnson jumped in and said, we're going to trigger Article 16. We're ready to trigger it. The conditions have been met. And they didn't do it. Well, who is stopping Boris Johnson, the Brexiteer, and Lord Frost, the Brexiteer, from triggering Article 16? Who, who was stopping them? I know there were consequences. The United States said, if you do it, there are consequences. The European Union said, if you do it, there are consequences. But no one was physically stopping these two Brexiteers from triggering Article 16. And they didn't do it. Whose responsibility is that? We were going to get some sort of fudge on the European Court of Justice's uh, supremacy over Northern Ireland. And he felt he just had to leave before that happened. Mm. Um, you know, there's a really conspicuous absence of the Northern Ireland Protocol in his resignation letter. And, and, and that was principally what he was working on. Mm. So I think... Yes, because he was covering his arse. <laughs> he was lying. He was a Brexiteer. <laughs> okay. he, look, why did Lord Frost resign officially? Lord, Ro Lord Frost resigned officially because he said he didn't like the, the, uh, the, the way the UK government was going when it came to dealing with the pandemic. And he didn't like the way the Treasury was dealing with tax rises. He resigned his position as Brexit minister over that. He didn't resign his position in the House of Lords, <laughs> notice that, but look, he left his position because he realised that he can't continue to lie, he can't continue to make threats and that people don't recognise as threats any longer. You know, at the very beginning, you're threatening to trigger Article 16, people were concerned. Wow. Well, you know, this is dangerous. If he triggers Article 16, there, there are consequences for that, for Northern Ireland, for peace in Northern Ireland. But then he kept saying it almost every week. And at that stage, it became an empty threat. Boris Johnson did it as well. And then, you know, once Boris Johnson says X, you know that X is, the, is not going to happen. <laughs> it's the opposite of X. So if you continue to say that we're going to trigger Article 16, and... Another problem with Lord Frost was that he would only provide problems, never solutions. This thing isn't working. The EU would provide a solution. Then he'd look for another problem and say, oh, this isn't working. The EU would provide a solution. Never did I hear Lord Frost present a problem and its solution. I never heard Lord Frost give specific examples of how the protocol wasn't working. So Lord Frost left because he realised that he could do nothing as, pri as Brexit minister. And I think he also resigned because he knew what was coming down the road. There's a lot of trouble coming in 2022. At the beginning of the year and about halfway through, new checks are coming on board. And this is going to put more pressure on the government and government departments. And eventually though, that pressure will be applied to the Brexit minister. So he got out of Dodge. He said, I'm getting out of this. I don't want anything to do with this. I'm washing my hands. I'm going. If Boris Johnson wants to be the, the captain of the Titanic, that's his decision. But I'm not going down with this ship. Lord Frost pulled the ripcord just in time before the proverbial hit the fan. <laughs> Lord Frost, yes, jumped out before uh, the crap hit the fan. And uh, in a sense, maybe Ben Habib is right there. But... Back to the point of Ben Habib, Ben Habib voted for the withdrawal agreement, which obviously was Brexit, but now he's saying that Brexit didn't happen. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.